Americans are drowning in debt. A very true statement. Uh, some of the numbers that are coming out are absolutely shocking and horrifying. Uh, student loan debt now is over $1 trillion. Um, Congress just keeps printing up more and more money. You know, uh, so many millions of Americans, I think nearly half, I forget what the numbers are, um, not nearly half, excuse me, about half of America, a little less than half of America is actually employed right now. Over half of America is not even working. That's not too good. And I get it, you know, you have young children, you have older people that aren't working. Uh, I get that. Um, but just going to give you some statistics here, some pretty amazing things. Um, the median income, according to usdebtclock.org, the official source, the median income is $35,682. I'll show that on screen here. Uh, the median new home cost is $492,293. Uh, now, I don't know what the ratio is there, but it's not very good. <laughs> All right, if your people are making just over $35,000 and the average house cost is now over $500,000, uh, that's not good. Okay, and you say, well, we, we've had inflation before. We've had inflation before in the late 70s and early 80s. We had very bad inflation. In fact, higher than we currently do. Well, higher than the current, you know, stated numbers perhaps, but the real numbers I think are a lot higher. But uh, what about that thing? About the inflation that we had back in the late 70s, early 80s? Well, in 1980, the median income in 1980 was $21,020 per year. And now we're 35,000. Uh, you know, 43 years later, it only went up $15,000. That's a problem. What about the home cost in 1980? The average new home cost in 1980, you ready? $47,200. Hmm. Um, so you're basically about three times the average yearly income is what it costs to buy a home. Now, that number it's not even close. I mean, thirty-five thousand as opposed to five hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, debt to income ratio was completely different in the late seventies, early eighties. So people say, well, we had high inflation back then, but the income was a lot higher, and the cost of living was a lot lower. That's the big difference there. Another, uh, some statistics that I can show you here. 42, peop 42 million people in America right now are living in poverty. 43 million are on food stamps. 43 million people can't even afford to buy food. Uh, that's not very good for the supposed richest nation in the world. Not very good at all. Well, what's going on? Proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Um, Americans have been involved in sin for a long time now. And uh, the old story goes about the piper, time to pay the piper. If you don't know the story, um, there was, I don't know if child's fairy tale or whatever else, but there was a city and they had a very serious rat problem. And they couldn't get rid of these rats. And a man came along and he said, I can play a special little tune on my little fife or, or flute or whatever else on my pipe. And I'll lead these rats out of the city. But you're going to have to pay me a lot of money if I, when I do this. And they said, oh, we'll pay anything. It doesn't matter. Well, he walked through the streets playing his pipe. All the rats left. They all walked outside of the city, followed this man outside of the city. He dropped them off way out in the middle of nowhere. And he came back in and he said, okay, pay up. And they laughed at him and they said, oh, you fool. Uh, you got the, rid of the rats. We don't have to pay you now. And he said, you know, time to pay the piper. And, um, <clears throat> and so he walked outside of the city, started to play the, the pipe. All the rats followed him and he took them right back into the city and then said, there, since you won't pay me now, you take care of the rats. Well, uh, rats are a picture of sin. And the piper would be a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord says, I'll take your sins away. I'll forgive your sins. I'll help you to get away from sinning and have, you can have a new life. 
And the people say, oh yes, please, God, exalt our nation. Please do great things for America. Please help us to win the Revolutionary War. Please help us to get through the Civil War. Please prosper us, Lord, please. The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Well, the God of America at one point in time was Jesus Christ. Um, lost and saved people both would, there was no problem with saying Jesus in the streets or whatever else. There was no persecution against Christians in this country. That's why America was exalted. But uh, the Lord took all the sins. I mean, there were still people lost going to hell. Don't get me wrong. I get that. But the Lord really helped America to become a great nation, a great and godly nation. And um, the Lord took the sins without the camp. The Bible talks about that. And he took those sins out there. And... Um, the people said, hey, now that the sins are gone, now all this evil stuff is gone and the nation is prospering like never before. Now we can live wickedly. Now we can reject Jesus Christ. We can reject the piper, so to speak. And the Lord comes back in and he says, okay, you owe me. You owe me your allegiance. You need to worship me because I am God. <laughs> no, we don't need to do that. We don't need to worship you, Jesus. So the Lord says, okay. Then all the evil that I protected you from, all the rats that I protected you from, I'm going to bring them back into your cities again. Instead of peace, there will be violence. Instead of prosperity, there will be poor uh, people and, and all kinds of problems. Instead of good health, there will be disease. So America uh, is falling apart right now. And if you're watching this video, maybe you're one of the people that has... Uh, gotten themselves into all kinds of debt and it's not looking good for you right now a lot of people bought into the housing market during the height of the bubble which would have been during the pandemic time and people were paying insane amounts of money for houses that weren't worth half as much and now you're stuck upside down in a mortgage that you can't pay off and the house is losing value every day it loses more value you might have bought a car or a truck or whatever else, and it's losing value. And uh, there goes the plow truck out that way, if you're hearing that. Um, but, you know, you're losing value. And what are you going to do? Well, you might be facing bankruptcy at this point in time. You might be thinking to yourself, boy, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, get you rid of this hand now. Um, you're facing one of two possibilities, either the end of your life or the beginning of a new life. That's the important part here. Um, you see, you can go forward and yes, things are going to be very bad for you because you've made some very dumb financial decisions and you're going to have to pay for that. Let's just face it. If you declare bankruptcy, your credit's going to be destroyed. It's going to be a very rough time for you. It's not actually a plow truck, it's a log truck. Stopped out there and now he's taking off out in front of my property here. But um, uh, you have to understand though, when God wants to get a hold of you, if you're not saved, if you're an unsaved person, God will oftentimes put you into a serious situation where you really need his help. Much like the city that's infested with rats. Well, your life can become infested with sin and you need a way out and there's nothing that you can do to get yourself out of that. You need the uh, piper, so to speak, to come along and lead those sins out of your life. And um, so I'm going to be putting a video here at the end of the this little video um, talking about please do this before you kill yourself. A lot of people are going to be heading into suicide. Uh, as the economy collapses, you're going to see more and more people that are going to commit suicide. And that's tragic, and it shouldn't be that way. But you have to understand, if you're suicidal, if you are buried in debt, that's not the end of your life. It can actually be the end of your old life and the beginning of a brand new life, a life of victory in Jesus Christ. Uh, it doesn't mean all your problems just whoop, are gone when you get saved. No, they're still there. In terms of the wages of sin is death, 
but the Lord can now help you. You can literally have the creator of heaven and earth coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to help you get through this stuff. And um, my life was a mess. Many years ago, when I first got saved, I had a lot of sins and a lot of bad things in my life. And the Lord helped me to get through that. And now I live a very victorious life. I'm in excellent health. And the uh, Lord's met all of our financial needs and things. And we're doing great, uh, my wife and I. But boy, if you would have seen us in the past, we had plenty of issues back then. So um, don't despair if you are drowning in debt and if things are going really bad for you. Because you can... Build your way out of it. And uh, right now, I'm walking on this land that I own. And it's a good amount of land. And I own it completely. I own it outright. I don't make any payments on it, in other words. And how did it come about? Through years of very hard work. Through years of very um, difficult saving and sacrifices had to be made. Uh, there was no debt involved in buying this land. And so want to encourage you but uh, please do take some time if you're saying my life is ending then please take some time to watch the video link at the end of this uh, little short video that I've done here please take some time to watch it thank you for watching